I don't know about you, but when I go to somebody's house and they say, bring something, oh, I got to go big. I mean, I've got to bring something great. And when I'm thinking about bringing like a cold cut platter, well, I'm not going to go to the deli and just say, well, give me a little of this and a little of that when I can make it. What would be the star of a meat platter? Pastrami. Call your mommy. We're about to make pastrami. So when I say that we're making pastrami, I know, a little bit of a daunting task. But that's why I want to show you this, because this is simple. This is easy. This is straightforward. And you can do this. So we're starting off with a little bit of boiling water right here. We're going to make the brine. What this really is, is we're going to brine this pastrami. Nice piece of brisket here. We're going to brine it about five days. Could go to 10. Then we're going to take it out. We're going to dry rub it. And then we're going to smoke it. Boom, boom, boom. I've always got a pastrami in some shape or form ready to go. When you make it yourself and you have a chance to kind of work these ingredients the way you want, oh, you are going to flip out. So let's get started. Super simple. Uh, some uh, simmering water, brown sugar, kosher salt, cinnamon, cinnamon, cinnamon sticks. Could never say that as a kid. Pink curing salt. This is going to give you some of that really nice uh, color that you want. It's also going to work in part of the curing process. Um, it's pretty easy to find these days. Go online if you can't, and you can have it shipped to you. But a little bit of the uh, curing salt, mustard seed, star anise. And again, where you want to take this, if you want to punch it up, a little more star anise, your call. Exactly two cloves. Chili flake. A little fennel some coriander, a little bay leaf, a lot of bay leaf, okay? And some juniper berry. Now the juniper berry just kind of crushed it by hand a little bit to kind of open it up. And when I talk about here, you want to smell? Oh, you can't smell. But when I talk about the real essence, the real flavor, the real beginning, this is what it is. All of these are gonna sit inside of here, something to stir it with, and just steep for about a half an hour, okay? Now let's talk about the brisket. Boy, is this the barbecue machine right here. Tons of fat, tons of meat, all connected and cooked the right way, out of bounds. Some of the best you'll find. So we're gonna trim off some of this fat. I don't wanna have too much and I wanna get to my meat. The thing I love to do with this fat though, this big white fat, is to take it and uh, render it down. And you wanna talk about awesome when you're making some fries. There's a ton of fat on this. Nice sharp knife goes a long way. Take your time. Now, this stuff right here will work as a barrier between the brine getting in there. After I've sat here and cut this much on it, it's good to grab the steel. You just gotta make sure that you have the fat off there. If there's fat on the knife or fat on the steel, it just works as a lubricant and doesn't sharpen it. There's a big fat vein that runs here between the two sides of this, the point and the flat. Now this is great when we're doing low and slow brisket for barbecue, but that big piece of fat right there was just gonna sit there and get in the way of us getting this thing brined and smoked and cured for sandwich meat or for a deli platter. The more meat that comes off on the fat, the less pastrami you get. Don't look at that part. All right, not as intimidating as it was at the beginning. And if you go to your butcher and you say, can you do me a favor, can you trim that down because I'm gonna make pastrami, he's gonna charge you for this fat. Um, it'd be nice if he'd make you some burger out of it too. But anyhow, you get the idea. So, steeping liquid, I mean, you gotta see this. Take a look at that. Just everybody in the pool. And what I'm going to do now is add ice and cool it down. Make that ice measurement the right measurement so you don't dilute it too much. The more you dilute it, the longer it's going to take for this thing to brine. Definitely not hot at this point. Bring over a big hotel pan. So we're gonna drop the brisket in, pour in the brine, making sure that it's submerged. This is gonna give you the color. 
It's gonna give you the sugar, the salt, all the flavors you're looking for in the pastrami. You are gonna love this. You are gonna be the hero. You're gonna show up with this and they're gonna ask you to come to every party, okay? Can you believe it's been five to 10 days? Yeah, right. Uh, I had an extra one going. Take a look at this. We've always got some pastrami rolling at the Fieti compound. Look at that bad boy. You can't see it yet. But check this out. Yes, it took a little bit of time to get this thing rolling, but it's been down for five, seven days. Really some beautiful color. We're gonna bring it out. Yo, there we go, a little bit down the arm. Some bay leaves. See a little bit of the juniper there, a bunch of the mustard, and it is ready to rock. So, now we'll bring up the paper towels. We're gonna let this drain here a little bit. We want it to be tacky, not wet, because we want this to, uh, want all this dry rub that we're gonna make here in a second, we want to stick to it. You get a couple of these going, I mean, when you get into the process of doing this and you're gonna go and have them in the cooler or rest them in the fridge, I'm gonna tell you something, do two or three. These freeze awesome, they're great gifts. And just like my same theory of when you're buying prosciutto, always buy an extra pound, because you know somebody's gonna be picking at it. All right, so we'll let this rest, let's get into the dry rub. Again, super, super simple. Um, juniper berries, throw those right in. Good spice grinder's always nice to have. A Lot of uh, black peppercorn. Okay, let me let these two run for a second. Fantastic. A little bit bigger, some bigger particles to it. More black peppercorn. Bunch of coriander. This we're gonna break down a little bit further. You can kinda hear it change its tone. Excellent. Go in there. A little chili flake. Brown sugar. Granulated garlic. A bunch of salt. And I need a bigger bowl. You should smell this spice warehouse right now. I mean, this is it right here. A little bit tacky, so this is gonna stick to it great. That's why I said make a few of these at the same time. You got the smoker going. You've gone to this trouble to get these great fresh spices. This is not the time that you use the old juniper berries that you had in there since the last time you made pastrami. Always go buy fresh spices. So we mix this evenly, black peppercorn. The juniper you can smell, amazing. Now we're gonna get this salt, brown sugar mixture on. Giving it a chance to coat on, kind of pressing it in with your hands. See how I'm just really nicely rubbing it and applying it. Now when I go ahead and flip this over, of course a bunch of it's gonna fall off, but for the time being, I'm getting it all on there. And if we could let this sit for a little bit, it's even gonna be better. Let this dry rub go, I mean, even up to a day, if you've got the time. It's again, in the same principle. You got five days to brine it at least, but if you can go 10, if you can go two weeks, you're my hero, okay? I'm catching it all. You see how I left this, uh, the cookie racks on there? It only gets better with time, folks. So if you can let it go uncovered for a day, a couple days in the fridge with the dry rub, Fantastic. I'm gonna take this right to the smoker. Any kind of smoker you got. You could be a smoker that you built, it could be a pellet smoker, whatever you might have, but I'm gonna tell you what, give it the time, don't rush it. Get down into that 220, 225 temperature zone, and then it's just gonna blow your mind. My boys at Camp Chef hooking it up. We're running that with a little hickory and a little cherry. Eight hours, we're gonna be money. What I'm talking about. Look at this. Look at this. You could see all that dry rub that's on there. Now, my favorite deli, I gotta be honest with you, one of my all time favorites is Katz's Deli. But we don't have Katz's out here in Cali. So I gotta kinda do my own work. But I wanna just show you some beautiful house cured pastrami. 
Oh. Now I had to get an angle on that to cut it. I'd let this cool down a little bit, but I want to show you right here, cooking this at home. Look at that tender. The right amount of pepper, and I like a lot of pepper, the right amount of the juniper, a little kiss of the sugar, a little heat from that chili, a little mushroom, a little set up like this. And I'll show you a cool thing to do when you take the pastrami, if you're having a hard time with it, is go ahead and cut it like this. Then you just get a little bit easier knife glide when you're only working with a smaller piece. Okay, a little bit easier to cut. But ladies and gentlemen, call your mommy. We just made pastrami. You're gonna love this recipe. Tell me what you think. See you next week.